I'm Ethan, a cloud support engineer here at the AWS office in Dublin. Today, I'm going to show you how to manage permissions for your AWS identity and access management users. They mean what they can do in the specific Kubernetes namespace in your Amazon EKS cluster, and then verify those permissions. Let's get started. To give members of your organization access to a namespace, you can create an iron rule that can be assumed by those members. In this example, I use an iron rule that can be assumed for demonstration. To verify that my IAM user has permission to assume the iron rule, for example, eks hyphen testing hyphen rule from the previous step, I will run the following AWS CLI command from my workstation. For example, we can use the AWS CLI command to do the assume rule. So remember to replace your account ID, your I'm role name, and the session name. So in this example, I'm going to use the EKS user to perform this action. Now I can configure kubectl to always use the rule when accessing the EKS cluster. You can run the following AWS CL command to update the kube config file. Remember to replace your cluster name, your account ID, and the URIM role name with the value that you want to use. So in this example, I'm going to use the EKS user to perform this action. Although Amazon EKS use IAM to provide authentication to your Kubernetes cluster, it still relies on native Kubernetes role-based access control for authorization. So this means that the next step we are going to do is to create a Kubernetes RBAC role and role binding for your cluster. When doing this step, make sure that you are accessing the EKS cluster using the IAM user or IAM role that already have permission to access the cluster. This means that the user usually is a cluster creator or an IAM identity that already has access to the AWS OS config map. For example, I'm using another IAM user who is my EKS cluster creator, for example, EKS hyphen on them to operate the following kubectl command. Because we are running an example to define our new IAM role, for example, eks hyphen testing hyphen role, to only allow access resource under a specific Kubernetes namespace, we will create a new Kubernetes namespace and define the Kubernetes RBAC role. Let's create the namespace first. Now that we can create a Kubernetes RBAC role, you can find an example of this reference article and copy it into a new YAML file. For example, I'm going to copy this file as a role.yaml file. This example defines a Kubernetes cluster role, kas-test-role, and allows the RBAC role to access and update Kubernetes resource in specific Kubernetes namespace which is test in this example. If you are using Kubernetes 1.22 or later version, remember to update the API version to the version 1. Then create the uh, background by using kubectl command to apply this change. Now we have the row. The next step is to create a Kubernetes role binding so Kubernetes can understand how to relate our permission. You also can find an example of this reference article and copy it into a new YAML file. For instance, role binding.yaml file. This example defines the role binding association for our kns test role with the specific Kubernetes user. KAS hyphen test hyphen user. Note that the role binding is a namespace resource that binds the RBAC role in the role REF section to the user in the subjects section. 
So you don't need to create the user kas-test-user because Kubernetes doesn't have a resource type user. Then create the RBAC role binding by using kubectl command to apply this change. So far, we successfully create the Kubernetes RBAC role and now have a user association with the name kas-test-user. The next step is to associate the IAM role. For example, we are using the eks-testing-role with the Kubernetes user, kas-test-user. So you can use eks-cto to easily configure the mapping by using the following command. Remember to replace your cluster name, your account ID, and your IAM role name with your values. Now we can switch back to the IAM user that can assume our IAM role, eks-testing-role, which will use the IAM role to access our eks cluster when operating kubectl. You can test the access to the Kubernetes namespace and see that it works. However, if you try to access a different namespace and this Kubernetes pods, the command can fail. So now you know how to manage permissions for your IAM users in an Amazon EKS cluster, limit what they can do in a specific Kubernetes namespace, and learn how to verify those permissions. I hope the detail and steps are helpful to you. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.